Hey guys, it's me Jocelyn. So today I'm going to be showing you, or like telling you I guess, a few tips for beginners or just like editing in general. I know I did a video like this like a day ago, but this one is specifically for beginners. This is not a tutorial, a beginner tutorial. If you want that, I have like four videos on how to make an edit for beginners. So there's that if you want that. But this is just like tips for new editors who are editing on A-Light Motion or kind of just editing in general. Whoops, okay. So yeah, let's just get started. So the first tip is to definitely just start out with knowing what orientation you want to make your edit in. I would say the most basic orientations are 1 to 1 or 16 to 9. My favorites personally are 1 to 1 and 4 to 3. I like 4 to 3 because the screen is not so like skinny. It has like a little bit like it shows like a little bit more. I don't know how to describe it. It's like a bigger kind of like screen, but it's kind of the same as 16 to 9, just a little bit cropped. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose 9 to 16 for this specific example because that's how big my picture is. So I'm just going to go ahead and add in my picture as of Matthew Gray Goobler. Now, my other thing is if you, do don't, if you don't feel like cropping your photos, so if you don't feel like cropping them, most um, editing programs will have an option for you to either zoom in the photo or kind of just fill the screen. So a light motion is the example I'm using. So what you want to do if your photo doesn't fit the screen fully because you can see a couple black lines right here Tap on your photo and go to these three dots and then hit fill screen and then it automatically fills Video star um, automatically fills it as well You just have to tap a couple buttons like right above the photo and after effects I think it fits as, a, as well and if it doesn't you could always just zoom in a little bit so My third tip is definitely adding tiles to all of your edits now um, it's different for everybody. Video Star is called Mirror, A Light Motion is called Tiles, and After Effects is called Motion Tile. So either way, just make sure to add those. So if you're on A Light Motion, just go ahead and type in tiles and then add them. Now I will show you the difference between having tiles and not having tiles. Also, you, when you have your tiles, make sure to mirror it or else it's not going to work. So I'm just going to go ahead and tap this right here and show what it would look like if you didn't have tiles. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a spin, for example. If I spun it and I didn't have tiles, you could you would see that there's a whole bunch of black right here. But if I go ahead and add my tiles on, it automatically looks so much better because it mirrors your photo in a way. And it just makes it look tons better. I'm going to go ahead and add a graph on this. So this is what it'll end up looking like if you have tiles. If you have tiles, as you can see, these edges right here are not going to be black and plain. Some people like that look, but that's just personally not my favorite. So make sure to mirror your photos. It always ends up looking great. So don't worry. You can never go wrong with mirroring your photos. My next tip is to add motion blur. I've seen so many people not add motion blur to their edits and it kind of makes me cringe. Like if you don't want to add motion blur, you definitely don't have to. That's your preference. But I know a lot of people, like a lot of editors, including myself, just kind of find it really unflattering, I guess you could say, when people don't add motion blur to their edits. So I'm just going to like do like half a spin or something right here. So let me just go ahead and adjust this real quick. So if I'm doing this, this is like, it's a good spin, but it has no effect to it. But see, when I add a motion blur, it automatically adds a little bit of a blur effect to it and it ends up looking smoother. It might not look smoother because it's kind of laggy whenever you add motion blur, but this is what it ends up looking like. It ends up looking a ton smoother and it adds this little blur effect. And I honestly really like that. And so do many other editors. And there's also editors that can make your motion blur look a lot smoother, such as RSMB or VSMB. RSMB is for After Effects, VSMB is for Video Star. Unfortunately, A Light Motion, I don't think they'll ever be able to have an RSMB type thing because it's just not like, they just can't do it within their app. But um, yeah, if you have Video Star After Effects, you can add on RSMB or VSMB to make your edit tons smoother. There's like millions of tutorials on YouTube if you want to figure out how to do it. I could also make one if you guys wanted, so just let me know if you want that. But yeah, those are my top tips. And one more tip is to always make sure to edit and export your edit in 60 frames per second. It does not matter what editing program you're using, A Light Motion, After Effects, Video Star, they're all the same. Edit all of them in 60 frames per second in 1080p. That is the best quality that you're going to possibly get. And okay, let me show you. If I exported this in, let's say 30 seconds, let's go ahead and do that. You can automatically see that it's just not going to be as good quality as it would 60. It's very laggy, but if I go ahead and change it to 60 frames per second, 
it's very smooth and it's a lot nicer and it makes the graphs look a lot smoother so that is my last tip is to export in 60 frames per second and yeah that's it for today's video if you guys enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and comment down below any tutorial requests that you guys may have i'm officially done with school for the year so expect tons more videos coming soon and yeah i love you guys bye